most of y'all don't want to hear this message anyway because you've already listened for four weeks, getting your toes stepped on, right? Here we go. God's at War, part five of a six-part series, and it's changing us. It's changing all of us. And we have found out for four weeks now, the fifth week being now, that the gods in our life are good things. So it's kind of confusing because we start learning about all these good things that we have, and we've made them into God things. And we don't like it because we realize it's the truth. And God's telling us that, whether it's through me or not, and you don't like it, God's telling all of us that there's a lot of good things in your life. You've turned into God things. They've all been good things. Success. Hey, the God of success last week is like, how can that be a bad thing? Well, when you make it more important than God, it became a God thing, and it's wanting to throw into your heart. Now we're going to talk about gods of love. And love's a great thing. It's from God. But the gods of love so often take place of God. We replace him with what he gave us. Love come from God. God is love. <laughs> but yet we make it our God, not him. I want to ask you today, who do you say I love you to? Now, most of y'all, <laughs> being around here for a few weeks, already know we tell everybody we love them. We tell everybody. But who do you love? I mean, it's a friend, it's a parent, it's a child, grandchildren. But we tell, I mean, I told a man yesterday in the bar before we left, I love you, and he said, I love you back. Is that the same as the love I have for my wife? I mean, who do you really love? I know the words become common, especially with our little group here. I love you, Chuck. See? He just said, I love you too. Now, how many churches do you get a 350-pound man telling a 180-pound man, I love you? And they don't think something wrong there, you know what I'm saying? We love each other. But how many do you, do you really love? Think about it for a second. I'm asking, who do you really love? Oh, Julie looking at him. I love you, honey. Brady, your spouse. You think about your spouse or you think about, okay, the person you're thinking about right now. Is it possible that that relationship, the person you just thought about, has replaced your relationship with Jesus Christ? Ooh, there's so many that say no. Mm. But make decisions based on their spouse or their real good friend and not on what they should be doing for the Lord. Come on now. Well, my spouse don't want to go to church, so I don't. Ooh, wait a minute. Come on now. Where should we go anyway? Does our relationship with that individual that was on your mind just now replace your relationship with Jesus Christ? In other words, do you have a love seat on your heart or do you have a throne for God? If you go to Genesis 29, the very first book, Genesis chapter 29, we'll be reading from that today. And we're going to find out that this is an old idolatry problem. It has been that we replace God with the love. God of love replaces God on our hearts. And you're going to see this, and you're going to see it in a manner you've never seen before. I know this. I believe this. If you came here expecting change, you're going to say, wow, I never thought of it that way. Genesis 29. We're going to start... This is a love story. You're going to love it. it it's, it's really one that you would expect on a reality show if you all watch those things instead of in the Scripture and the Word of God. It's a love story that takes an unexpected turn, just like a reality show, right? And it begins when Abraham's grandson Jacob falls in love with Rachel. Amen. So if you go to verse 16, I'm going to read verse 16. You all there? Amen? Amen. And it's... And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Ooh. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Jacob loved Rachel. He liked what he saw. Amen. And the word tells us that Leah was older, weak-eyed, 
tenderite in the King James. But Jacob wanted Rachel, and he said he worked for seven years. And he does, too. Glory to God. Verse 20, And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. Now, that's probably one of the most romantic verses in the Bible. It's close. If you read this again, And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, but this part, for many days, whoops, and they seemed unto him but a few days. Why? For the love he had to her. Seven years seemed like a few days because of the love that he had for her. Sounds a little bit like idolatry. I mean, he's, he's really on fire for her. I can't think of any seven years that went by real fast. No offense, honey. Don't. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. But isn't that a romantic verse? Yes. You see, there's a... I mean, is that even rational to, to work for seven years? Hey. Mm. I guess it seems like it, especially if we're into love stories, right? But it's not... Love's not rational. Love's not rational. It gets real... It, <laughs> it gets real hard... Uh, there is a completely irrational side to love, and most of us are going, yeah, you've been in love, your first love, you know, the, the one that, you know, you, you, there's an irrational side of love. And, and we have a hard time thinking objectively about things. And uh, I was sharing with a sister just yesterday about how when we love someone, we don't want to believe something bad about them. This is a friend, co-worker, your spouse especially, but I mean, I, I have a friend right now that I just found out's a thief, and I didn't know he was a thief, and I, and I was in denial, but because of the source and, and how it came in and about, there's no way I can deny it, but my, I wasn't being objective. My emotions was in place. My emotions was like, there's no way that this individual could be that because I love him, and I know he wouldn't be that way. I was being irrational. Are you getting this? I wasn't being objective. There's just no way that individual could do that. We get that way about people we get attached to emotionally. That's what love does now. Come on, love gets, uh, it gets a root on you, and, and, you're, and you're like, there's no way this individual, do, put that, whoever individual God's trying to tell you about right now, okay, in this message, each person should be getting a different message, not the same message, but you should be hearing something from the Holy Spirit right now, okay? And the love of God is on our hearts a lot of times instead of God being on our hearts, especially with relationships, if the individual's been put up in place of God, it has become a God at war for your heart. I do it with individuals. This thing, this slapped me around. I didn't want to practice this message. I thought, I'll just do that. I did it one time, so I ain't doing it again. God said, hey, well, I'm going to spank you a few more times before you go talk to my people. <laughs> we have a hard time thinking objectively about people that we love. And whoever you get attached to, whatever they tell you, you just that's just got to be the gospel because you love them. Your emotions. Mm. I uh, I explained how our mind this this wasn't in my notes, but I as I was talking yesterday with this young lady, the Lord put on my heart to share how in my book that I did. I thought that a lieutenant had woke me up in the middle of the night to go be with some folks because another lieutenant had been killed. And if you would have asked me prior to me writing this book, I would have told you I would have sworn a stack of Bibles and believed with all my heart that the other lieutenant woke me up. But an E7 told me he woke me up. You see, our mind sometimes believes our lies. That's what I call it. Are you getting this? Because if you think you, it's kind of off track. It's almost like a, a, I'm going on a rabbit trail, but it's not because it still fits in with not being objective. I just, my mind just told me that it was the lieutenant that woke me up until this E7 says, Monty, I woke you up. I said, you sure, sir? I call him Scott now. I said, you sure, Scott? I said, yeah, I'm 100% sure. We talked. You said you're going to brush your teeth. I went back to my men until you came. Wow. So now when I see that story, I don't see the lieutenant anymore, but I don't see Scott either because my mind's all confused. Are you getting this? Sometimes you think you said something, and a person's looking right at you and going, Teresa Anna, you did not say that. And you're going, I did say that to you. 
One of us is wrong. Well, I said this. Well, no, I said that. Well, guess what? Right now, the two of you got somebody else up on the throne because if you're arguing about that, what you should be saying is, God, just help us get along. Are you getting this? Okay, glory to God. <laughs> the, the, well, in verse 20, we had the most romantic verse. Jacob served seven years. We kind of know that's kind of, especially, you know, it's kind of irrational love there. But, it, you know, he really loves this woman so much. But on verse 21, he says, And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, and I may go in unto her. And the other, and the other uh, it says, um, Give me my wife, my time is complete. I want to lie with her. We went from totally romantic to, well, that's not so romantic. But give the guy a break. It's been seven years, right? So he's been working really hard to, for one <laughs> Doesn't sound too romantic. But all of a sudden, there's this soap opera twist that I was talking about, like from the reality show. Verse 22. So Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. But when evening came, he took his daughter Leah. Uh-oh. He took his daughter Leah and gave her to Jacob. And Jacob lay with her. Hmm. There could be another whole sermon on why you don't drink <laughs> and do that. Because in verse 25, when morning came, there was Leah. You know, Jacob woke up, thought he was going to find Rachel. Well, shouldn't have partied so hard. He would have known that night. But anyway, bottom line is, Jacob said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Boom. What a twist. Why have you deceived me? If we place... If we place on our heart anything that's not of God, it will disappoint us. Seven years, he placed Rachel on his heart. Seven years, the God of his life is Rachel. His love for Rachel, period. And what happened? Boom. Carpet pulled out from under his feet. But that's not it. We're not, we're not, we're not done. If you go down to verse 32, we find out that Leah has a God on love on her heart too. She has a God of love on her heart for who? Jacob. She wants Jacob to love her so much. And you watch. This is going to be awesome. Y'all are going to say, whoa, I've never seen it like this. Verse 32, Leah became pregnant, gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben. For she said, now listen to this, it is because the Lord has seen my misery Surely my husband will love me now. Now she says, God gave her a baby. But where's her, where's her focus? On her husband. She's saying, but surely my husband will love me now. She's got a love seat on her heart, folks. And she's sharing it with the God of love for Jacob with the God Almighty who gave her a child. Are you getting this? Check this out. She conceived again. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, because the Lord heard that I am not loved. See, you see, all in one part there, because I am not loved. The God of love that she wants from Jacob, because the Lord had heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too, the second child. So she named him Simeon. She still got a love seat on her heart. Y'all getting this? Okay, again, she conceived. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, now listen to this one. This, don't miss this. I can't. You won't shut up. Okay. Now, at last, my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Whoa. In the King James, now she conceived again. No. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me because I have borne him three sons. Did you notice something in the third one? There's no love seat anymore. She didn't even thank God for the child. Oh. The love, the God of love has taken so much of her time that she was sharing. See, when we share the love seat of our heart with the God Almighty, the God that you're at war with will finally take over. And in the third son, she says, now at last my husband will be attached to me because I have borne him three sons. She didn't say nothing about God. The first two times she thanked God, basically, she acknowledged that God gave her the child. Here, woo, I, 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 me, 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 we, we, we did all of this. He will 
love me finally because I have barium three sons. You getting this, right? She has given up totally on God. Basically, she's turned her back. We give up on God without meaning to, folks. You don't have to just say, I give up on you, Lord. I got to be mad at you. I met a man one time that was mad at God. There's nothing wrong with being mad at God because he knows you are anyway. Might as well tell him, amen? But we turn our backs on God lots of times without knowing we did. And she just did. We just read it, right? Okay. Finally. Oh. We're, we, we've been brought up to live ever living happily ever after. It's in all the things we read to the little ones. It's, it, you know, look at all the shows on TV. They, 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 they wind around love. The books, the love romances, my wife pointed out to an old lady, or elderly lady, sorry. I'm getting old. I can't say that anymore. I've been told. <laughs> but she was slightly older than me, and she's reading a love novel, and we're like, she goes, I can't believe all the people that read these love novels. But love, the God of love, is important to a lot of us, and we need to think about where we're really placing it, even for our spouses. Come on now. I already, I already touched that. A lot of us make a decision based on what our spouse wants to do instead of what God wants us to do. God should be on the throne of your heart regardless of what your spouse thinks you should be doing. I'm probably going to have a husband or a wife on my door tonight. But anyway, truth's the truth. No you're going to get the unadulterated truth here. I'm sorry. The problem comes when we replace God with the relationship that he gave us. Here we go back to, I give him a present, he plays with it, and doesn't want nothing to do with me until the present breaks. Same. She wasn't looking to the joy from God, but to the joy from Jacob. Glory. Folks, if you have a problem in your relationship... Now, I'm not a counselor, but I'm going to tell you, if you're having a problem in your relationship, it don't have to be just spousal relationship, but a relationship. I'm going to tell you right now, you've already placed that relationship higher than God, and that's why you're having problems. Done deal. Because if you place your relationship with God as top priority in your life, everything else will fall into place. In other words, the things that you thought were really important that you were upset about won't even be a problem anymore. They'll be petty. But when you place an individual up here and you want them to do this, this, and this, and not do this, this, and this, and meanwhile, you ain't talking to God at all, you are destined for a frustrated relationship. You need to get God up there where he belongs and everything else down here where it belongs. And it starts falling. It's amazing how it starts falling together. Had an old pastor tell me one. There I go again. <clears throat> but anyway, a spiritual father telling me, Monty, I have learned over the years that if you will just slow down, most problems fix themselves. If the person's leaning on God. Amen. Okay, well, let's, let's move on from this, ro this romantic story because there has to be a happy ending. <laughs> Amen. Well, if I stopped right here, you'd be leaving with your tail between your, your legs saying, I don't want to go back there because la, la, la. there's some good news. I told you, if you put God first, what happens? It's not just me. It's not just me. Watch what happens here. This is so powerful. Verse 35. I love this part. She conceived again. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, This time I will praise the Lord. Woo! So she named him Judah. King James says, and she conceived again and bare a son, and she said, now will I praise the Lord. Now, finally, I'm getting around to putting what belongs on the throne of my heart. It's God himself. Jacob ain't mentioned. The love of Jacob ain't mentioned. She's just thanking God for what he has given her, and it's Judah. Ooh. Some of y'all look like a deer fixing to be hit by the headlights. Check it out. God had a plan. And God wanted himself to be put on the throne of her heart. And he knew once that happened, she didn't, but everything would take care of itself. And I'm talking about everything, folks. Turn to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Mm -mm -mm. First book of the New Testament. And it's, 
you know, it's not the best way to, most of us wouldn't care to start, start off a, a book this way because it's full of names, you know. But these are names of the ancestors of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you look at Matthew 1, verse 2. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas. Judah. Judah, her fourth son. God had a plan for this marriage. It wasn't for Leah to receive the love that she was so wanting so bad. It was the plan for the ancestor, Jacob, to have Judah for Jesus to come into this earth. That's pretty powerful, ain't it? And when did it happen? When she gave the whole throne of her heart to God and thanked God for that child. So what do you got on your hearts today? Because, you know, people talk about their destiny. But if we keep thanking ourselves or thanking the individual, the love of our lives, or expecting something else and we don't finally get on our knees and just give it all to God and give him the throne of our heart we're going to go around a vicious circle they could have had 12 boys which they did but I mean 12 more boys before finally Judah was born you see what I'm saying give your whole heart to God today and the way to do that is to make sure Jesus Christ is in your life so let's make sure before we close every head bowed no eyes closed if you've never you can't even fathom doing what I'm talking about. You can't give your whole heart to Jesus Christ if you've never even asked him into your life. So if there's a single individual in here that's never given their life to the Lord, you've never, ever asked Jesus Christ to your Lord. You may have said the words, but you honestly know right now the Holy Spirit has told you, I have never given my life truly to you, Lord. I want to. Just raise your hand. Okay. Anybody else? Is there anybody else? Glory to God. Is there anybody here that has given their heart over to the Lord, but now you're sharing it with lots of gods or at least the God of love, and you know right now you need to rededicate your life to the Lord, and you need to say, God, I want you to take over my heart right now. Totally, 100%, I want to give you my heart. Just raise your hand. <laughs> you're already raising your hand. Raise your hands. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. This is powerful. Y'all can look up here. Um, we have a salvation in a lot of folks that, uh, that, that definitely have been touched by this series, God's at War. Young man, would you come up here? Come here. Leave. I want y'all to your hands forward and pray with with us. Pray whatever God puts on your heart while I pray with Him. I had a uh, feel the spirit moving. Y'all still anybody don't feel it? I mean, we've been here long enough. If you don't feel it, come on up here and get a touch of the Holy Spirit. Whew. I got some for you. Okay. 
Glory to God. Mm. Give God all the glory.